Hello, students. Welcome to the fifth lecture for the semester. I hope you're all in good health. Today, we are continuing with our virtual class. Today is the fifth week. And today, our focus is going to be on slave trade in Africa. Slave trade in Africa. I know we have heard a lot about slave trade. So many stories. The question then is, what is slavery? Or who is a slave? Slavery can be defined as a condition in which a human being is owned by another. The person who is owned by another person is therefore referred to as a slave. A slave is therefore someone who is owned by another person. The person who owns the slave sees the slave as his or her property or her good. And the slave is deprived of his or her rights. When you are a slave, you do not have any rights that the ordinary people who are regarded as free people hold in society. Slavery involves the situation where the slave is forced or coerced to perform certain work, which may even be more than the energy that the person have to perform that task. When you are a slave, you have no control over where you stay the type of work you do or where you go. All of this is decided by the person who owns you. And this person is usually referred to as the slave master. Slavery has been part of the world history. What this implies is that slavery did not only occur in Africa, but in several parts of the world of which Africa is part. In Africa, people were slaves in their own hometowns. People were slaves within the continent and people became slaves out of the continent. What this means is that when you come to Africa or when you talk about slavery in Africa, there were slaves who were living on the continent of Africa, even though they were Africans. There were slaves who were taken out of the continent of Africa. And there were people living in their own hometowns who were also slaves. So for instance, you may be an Akan, living in, let's say, a Jusso, but you will be a slave in that same hometown. A slave can be enslaved for a lifetime, or a person can be a slave for a certain period of time after which the freedom of that person may be granted by the slave master. But most of the time, people became slaves for a lifetime. All slavery, it is said, brought so much wealth to people engaged in the slave trade, the slave masters, the slave raiders, the buyers of the slaves. It brought so much misery, sadness to the slaves themselves. Slave trade in Africa, in Africa came to an end in the 1800s. But there is no historical record to tell which the exact number of people who were taken out of the continent of Africa as slaves. Research showed that there were millions of people 
who became slaves, both within the continents of Africa and outside the continent of Africa. In Africa, you can talk about the trans-Saharan slave trade and also the trans-Atlantic slave trade. The trans-Saharan slave trade, as the name suggests, was the slave trade where the slaves were transported by foot through the Sahara Desert. And the transatlantic slave trade was the slave trade where the slaves were transported by ship through the Atlantic Ocean. Now, what this means is that in trans-Saharan slave trade, which was largely undertaken by the Arabs, the slaves who were bought from various parts of the continent were moved from one place to the other on foot through the Saharan desert. They walked several miles to whichever destination the slave master was taking them. A lot of people died along the way. But in transatlantic slave trade, the slaves walked on foot to the, the ports and then they were put on ships and shipped out of the continent of Africa through the Atlantic Ocean. It is said that the transatlantic slave trade began in the year 1693 and it lasted for a period of four centuries. Afterwards, the trans-Saharan slave trade also began or continued. And the trans-Saharan slave trade is said to have lasted for a period of 17 centuries. This put together indicates that the African history or indicates that slave trade is a significant aspect of the history of the African people. It took a lot of the Africans' time, their resources, and their human resources as well. Africa. In Africa, a great number of the people who were shipped through the Atlantic Ocean, as well as the Trans-Saharan Desert, were taken to European colonies Slavery was practiced both in the northern part of Africa and then the sub-Sahara parts of Africa. Slavery in the northern part of Africa began when the Arabs invaded North Africa and then introduced Islam religion to the people. This happened somewhere in the year AD 600s. Because the northern part of Africa had been invaded by Arabs, and that most of the people had converted to Islam, slavery at the time was guided by Islamic laws. Because of that, there were certain Islamic laws that permitted slavery, but it also provided some rules to regulate the relationship between the slave and the slave master. And this to some extent was to protect the slave and to prevent the slave master from meting out extreme cruelty onto the slave. Another example of the Islamic law was that it prevented slave masters from abusing their slaves. There was, all, there was also another law which indicated which category of people one can enslave and the category of people who could also not be enslaved. In Sub-Sahara in, in Sub Africa, most of the slaves 
who were transported from this area were sent to European colonies in other parts of the world, especially in the America and other islands within Africa. They were sent there to go and work on the plantations that have been established by these Europeans in those colonies. How were slaves acquired? The people who were involved in the buying and the selling of slaves, how did they acquire these slaves? Slaves were acquired either by purchasing or by capturing them, by, or by capturing them. This means that a person can acquire a slave either by buying the slave or going into the forest to capture the slave. But most of the times, there were categories of people or groups of people whose business was to go into the interior of the African continent or the African forest to capture the slaves and bring them to the coast to be sold out to the Europeans. These slave raiders used mediums like raids or like wars when they wage war on a, on a certain society or a certain group of people, they capture the people, make them captives, and then sell them to the Europeans as slaves. Some of them also went into the forest and kidnapped the people and brought them into their areas to be sold as slaves. They could also come and just rage raid on a, on, a, on a particular community. And whoever falls in their hands, you are captured and then you are brought to their holdings and then later on sold as, as a slave. When a person was captured, either through war or kidnapped, or even through or, or even through raid. Sometimes the capturers gave the, the relatives of the captive the grace period to come and pay a certain amount of money as ransom. When that money was paid, the person was released. Now, what this means is that there were certain times that people who were captured either through wars or kidnap or raids, did not become slaves immediately. Rather, they became slaves after their relatives were unable to pay the money that the captors were requesting from them. When you lose that opportunity to, gain, to regain your freedom, you were sold out as a slave to another person. And when that happened, the probability that you were going to get out of slavery and have your freedom back was something you could never have. Most of the times, people hardly ever got out of slavery. So what are the types of slavery or what types of slavery existed in Africa several years ago? The first one is formal slavery. The first type of slavery is formal slavery. What is formal slavery? Formal slavery is the type of slavery where the slaves were considered as property of their masters. They were owned by their masters. So their masters decided whatever they wanted to do with them. They could sell them at any given time. They asked them to work whatever kind of work they desired. And they had no regard for their rights as human beings. 
neither did they have any regard for their wishes. They decided where they stayed, how much food they ate. In short, they were in total control of the life of the slave because the slave was seen as a property to them. The second type of slavery is the concubinate slavery. This is said to be a special category of slavery where the slave masters took some of the female slaves and made them their concubines. They had sexual intimacy with the women and had children with them. The children who were born out of such relationships were usually referred to as the mulattoes or what we call the half caste. They were mixed race children. This kind of slavery, because the women were seen as the concubines of the slave masters, they enjoyed certain rights that people in the former slavery system did not enjoy. In Northern Africa for particularly, or for instance, under the Islamic law, a concubine who was a slave to a slave master or a slave who was the concubine of a slave master enjoy certain rights. The children who were born to these concubines could not be sold by the slave master. And once a concubine gave birth for the slave master, the slave master could also not sell the concubine. Most of the times, these children were treated as, as equal as the free people. This means that the children of the concubine slaves were not considered as slaves, but rather as free people. The next type of slavery is the court slavery. This is the type of slavery where the slave is attached to a shrine or the person is a slave to a shrine. The slave here is owned by the deity and the priest of that shrine. The priest had total control over the slave, decided what kind of work he or she will do. And if the slave was a woman, they had access to them sexually. The female slaves in this type of slavery could not marry or be married to any other person apart from the deity and the priest. People in the court slavery could also not be sold to other people to serve them as slaves. This means that they were bound to be slaves to the shrine for the rest of their lives. Children who were born to women who were slaves to the shrines were considered as outcasts. Most of the times, slaves in the court slavery system were also considered as outcasts and people did not want to associate with them. An example of the court slavery in Ghana is the trocosi system, which was practiced by the Evers of Ghana some years ago. The next type of slavery is the debt peonage or pawnship. This is a type of slavery where people were used as guarantee of payment of debts. So it is the type of slavery where you become a slave because you have been used as a payment of debt, either by your parents or by a relative. Usually the slave is not the debtor. 
An example is Kofi borrows money from Ama, but Ama is unable to repay the money to Kofi. So Ama gives to Kofi her son or nephew or niece as payment for the debt that she owes Kofi. There were instances that after Ama has given the child to the debtor or the creditor, she will ask for a period of time, let's say five years, to try and pay the money back. If Ama is able to pay the money back, she is able to regain the freedom of her child back. But if Ama is not able to raise the money, to pay the money back, then the child be remains a slave for the rest of his or her life. So here, we say that the slave is used as a guarantee of payment. It was assumed that once a person has been given to the creditor, the debtor was going to fulfill his or her part of repaying the money back. Because most of the times people were not able to repay the money back, this type of slavery became an avenue where men were able to take slave wives for themselves. Others also took the slaves as concubines. Then others had them as additional wives. The last one is serfdom. This is also the type of slavery where the slaves belong to a particular political position rather than an individual. And this political position is usually associated with a piece of land or a place of habitation. So the slave is a slave to the place that he or she is staying rather than a particular person or an individual. So we say that this type of slavery was more of a religious slavery or bondage rather than a political one. Now let's take a look at the original features of the slave trade. When we say regional features, all what we're trying to say is that when you come to Africa, slave trade occurred in several parts of Africa. But the nature of the trade in those parts of Africa are not the same. There were certain things that makes slavery that happened in one part of Africa different from another part of Africa. Our focus is going to be on how slave trade was practiced or conducted in four aspects of the continent of Africa. We will look at how slave trade was conducted in West Africa, how it was conducted in North Africa, how it was conducted in Central Africa and then Eastern Africa. We will look at the European powers which took control of those parts and how they got their slaves and for what purpose they used the slaves. So now let's look at West Africa. West Africa is an aspect of Africa or a part of Africa, which was largely invaded by the Europeans. In the year 1400s, the Europeans had invaded the Western part of Africa and then established their colonies in places like the islands in the Atlantic Ocean 
they had colonies in the Americas and they had colonies in certain parts of Africa. These colonies had very rich resources, especially natural resources, which the Europeans wanted to exploit, to take, and then use it to build their own countries. They also established large plantations, or simply put, large farms in these colonies. But the problem they faced was the people to work in these farms and to also work and get access to the natural resources that were found in these parts of their colonies. So what they did was that they decided to use the people who were living in those colonies as their source of labor. So for instance, in their, in their, in their colonies or in their colonies in the Americas, they decided to use the indigenous people living in the America to undertake to undertake their economic activities. Or they decided to use the people living there to work on their plantations. Let me state that the current people living in the United States of America are not the indigenous people who once lived there. Before the coming of the Europeans, to America, there were people who were already living there. So America at a point in time was colonized. America at a point in time was colonized by the Europeans. Now, when the Europeans decided to use the people who were already living in that area as their sources of labor to work on their plantations, they realized that the people did not have enough strength to be able to work the number of hours and the type of work they want them to do. Again, they also realized that the people were very prone to some diseases that were brought to the area by the Europeans. Diseases like smallpox, cholera, and measles. The indigenous people of the America were suffering from these diseases and most of them were dying as a result of it. Because of this, there was shortage of human resource to work on the plantations of the Europeans in the American colonies or in their colonies in the America. So they had to look for other means of getting people to come to the America or to come to the Americans to come and do that work for them. And that is where they turned to Africa. Africa then became the hub where the Europeans got the human labor they needed to work on their coal or to work on their plantations in their American colonies. What you need to remember is that the Europeans also had colonies in Africa. They realized that the African people were more strong and more resilient to diseases than the people in other parts of their colonies. So they began to take people from Africa as slaves, take ship them through the Atlantic Ocean to the America, to Sao Tome, 
and to some islands in the Atlantic area. This is said to have occurred between the year 1440s all the way to the year 1860s. And the trading reached its peak from the 1700s to the 1850s. Because the Europeans needed strong people to work on their farms, they preferred mostly men between the ages of 15 and 30 years. And these, these ages are the youthful ages that any continent can have to help in their development. So if young men between the ages of 15 and 30 years were the preferred people to be taken as slaves, to work on plantations in other parts of Africa and out of the continent of Africa, then we can say that Africa lost most of its youthful human resources. Who could have contributed to its development? To the Europeans. Historians have given an estimate that when you come to West Africa, there is about, or there was about 31 million people who were shipped through the Atlantic Ocean from Africa to the Americas as slaves. Out of this total number of 31 million people, a greater number of them came from the coastal areas of West Africa between Senegal and then Cameroon. Majority of them were also taken from the, the land area between the Volta River in Ghana and then the Niger River in Nigeria. So the area between the Volta River in Ghana and the Niger River in Nigeria was referred to as the slave coast because it was the area where a large number of people were taken as slaves from Africa. Let's look at slave trade in Eastern Africa. The first evidence of a slave trade in East Africa dates all the way back to the time where Islam, to the time where Islam gained foot in the Eastern parts of Africa. And this occurred around the year AD 600. The slaves who came or who were taken from the eastern part of Africa were shipped out of port on the Indian Ocean coast. And this took place for several centuries. The Abbasid, the Abbasid Caliphate, this Abbasid Caliphate is now all where the Abbasid Caliphate was located is now the present day Iraq and Iran. This caliphate was known to have imported a lot of African slaves to use them as soldiers, farm laborers, and then some also as domestic workers. The Muslim traders who were engaged in slave trade also sent Africans all the way to Indonesia and China. In the next centuries or in the centuries that followed, the Arabs who established the trading communities along the coast initially were mainly interested in the buying of ivory and gold. But history indicates that even before the first evidence of slave trade was got or was gotten or was found in East Africa, there seems to suggest that slave trade 
had taken place in the eastern part of Africa several years, even before the first evidence was found. The eastern part of Africa was mainly controlled by the Portuguese. And the Portuguese are said to have arrived in the eastern part of Africa in the year 1500s. They took total control of the coastal area and then they carried African slaves to the Portuguese to their colonies in Asia. This means that the Portuguese who took control of the eastern part of Africa took Africans as slaves and transported them to their colonies all the way in Asia. Beginning in the year 1600s, the Oman states expanded their plantation. They were into the growing of date palms along the coast of Kenya. They expanded the transport their plantation, which required that they needed more people to work on their farms. So in the early 1700s, the French also came to the eastern part of Africa and they also established a Caribbean style sugar plantation. The sugar, the sugar plantation of the French was located on the Indian Ocean Islands between Mauritius and the Reunion. Now, because the French had come to establish a sugar plantation. They had come to establish a sugar plantation and the Oman states had also expanded their date palms plantation. It created a very huge demand for human labor. This human labor could not be gotten from the places where the plantations were located. So it led to an increase in the demand for slave labor. Because of this, there was high demand for slaves in the Eastern parts of Africa. And in the year 1700s, slave trade became the major economic activities or the major economic activity in the Eastern part of Africa until the mid 1700s, when there were new demands for labor. The largest part of the slave trade in the Eastern part of Africa occurred in the Southern part of the coast but by the year 1800s, almost every port or every harbor on the Eastern coast was involved in slave trade. So from there we had the Arabs, we had the Swahili people, and then the African slave traders who were busily engaged in the selling and buying of African slaves. The Arabs, the Swahili and the African slave traders will go into the interior of the African continent, conduct raids and expeditions, and then capture people without their consent and bring them to the coast to be sold as slaves. From the year 1500s all the way to the middle of the 1800s, the Europeans are said to have brought millions of people from Africa to America to work on their farms and in their mining companies. Most of the slaves from the eastern part of Africa came from countries like Mozambique and Tanzania and Tanzania and the area around Lake Malawi. Some of them also came from the eastern part of Congo 
and Madagascar. Most of these slaves were sent to the Americas to go and work on their on the plantations of the Portuguese in those places. Again, during the first half of the eight of the 1800s, the slave traders from Brazil, another slave traders came from Brazil to come and buy slaves from the eastern part of Africa. This was because Brazil had also started their plantations and their farms were very large and huge and their plantation economy was growing, but they lacked the people to work on these farms or these plantations. So they also came to East Africa or the Eastern part of Africa to come and buy slaves to use as labor on their farms. It became a very lucrative job or a very lucrative business at that point in time. Because of this, the African rulers were also engaged in the trade themselves. It is said that the slave trade in East Africa reached its peak between the year 1770 and 1870. And the number of people who were shipped out of the eastern part of Africa amounted to about 30,000 people every year. Let's look at how slave trade was conducted in the central part of Africa. Slaves who were gotten from the central part of Africa were also sent to European colonies both within Africa and out of the continent of Africa. And this is said to have occurred with, uh, by the year 1500s. So if you want to take the total number of slaves who were shipped out of Africa to the European colonies in the Americas, in the Asia, then they are, and then in the Atlantic islands, one out of five slaves were shipped across the Atlantic Ocean and they came from the central part of Africa. And the countries they usually came from were between Congo, the areas between Congo and Angola. During the 1500s, the Portuguese who had come to the central part of Africa also established sugar plantations in the island of Sao Tome. When they established the plantation in Sao Tome, they began to export slaves from Central Africa to work on the plantations in this island. So by the year 1560s, they had brought about 30,000 slaves, mostly from Angola, to work on the plantations in Sao Tome. The Portuguese could not get access to these 30,000 slaves by themselves. Rather, they were assisted by young African warriors who conducted raids, went into the deep side of Africa, forest, kidnapped people and brought them to be sold to the Europeans as slaves. By the year 1600s, the Portuguese had, had established other plantations in Brazil. And the size of the plantations in Brazil was much larger than the ones they had in Sao Tome. Because of this, Brazil became the main market where the Portuguese traders 
sold their slaves. In the 1700s, Brazil also discovered gold. The, the people of Brazil realized that they had gold and diamonds in their country. And they needed people to help them dig and find the gold and the diamonds. This means that the Brazilians did not only require slaves to work in their plantations or their farms, but they also needed them to work as miners in their mining industry. Apart from the Portuguese, who came to buy slaves in Central Africa, the English, the French, and the Dutch, in the year 1600s, also came to join in the slave trade activity in the central part of Africa. The English, the French, and the Dutch began their operations along the Atlantic coast. And they primarily shipped the slaves they got to their sugar plantations in the West Indies. As the demand for slaves grew, some Africans in the central part of Africa realized that it was a very lucrative job. So they became deeply involved in the slave trade activities. Because of this, they went much deeper into the forest or the interior of Africa continent to get slaves for the Europeans. They expanded their sources of getting the slaves and they conducted so many raids and kidnappings. They even went as far as places that were far away from the central part of Africa. Now, what this means is that they even went beyond their boundaries to go and find people to capture them and bring them as slaves. By the 1700s, almost every society in Central Africa owed their power to either being in control of slave groups or either being able to provide defense for your people. Now, what this means is that at a point in time, the power that a particular society possessed was based on the fact that they had control over the roots or the paths where the slave trade activities took place or they had the power to be able to protect themselves from slave raiders who invaded their communities or societies. The African kingdoms around the coast, when they realized that people were now going into the deeper parts of the interiors to go and capture people and bring them to be sold as slaves. They stopped the raiding activity and rather became the middlemen between the slave raiders and the slave buyers. Now, because they were living on the coast, they were much closer to the Europeans. So what they did was that they would rather wait for the people who would go into the bush to get the people then these middlemen will buy the slaves from the raiders and then sell them in turn to the Europeans. This gave them more profit 
gave them more power and gave them more money. It happened that some chiefs and some wealthy people in a community deliberately borrowed money to people. And when the people were unable to pay back, they condemned them to, into slavery and then had the opportunity to sell them to the Europeans as slaves. After the 1800s, almost half of, after the 1800s, that is the time where slave trade in Africa is said to have come to an end. Almost half of the slaves who were shipped from Africa is said to have come from the central parts of Africa. Let's look at the final parts. How was slave trade conducted in the North Africa? Slave trade in the northern part of Africa began after the Arabs invaded North Africa and conquered them in the year AD 600. Slave trade was already a part of the Islamic civilization. And so when they conquered the northern part of Africa and they took over the place, slave trade came with them. At first, most of the slaves were brought, most of the slaves who were brought to the Islamic areas came from Central and Eastern Europe. And these slaves were supplied by Italian agents. These Italian agents got slaves from the Central and the Eastern parts of Europe and then sold them to the Arabs in the Northern part of Africa. But as the year progressed, the European states gained more strength and they became powerful such that they were able to protect their people from being raided or kidnapped or being caught and sold into slavery. So when the Arabs in the northern part of Africa were no longer getting slaves from the eastern and central part of Europe, they turned to Africa to get the slaves they needed to work for them. So in addition to the Muslims engaged in the trading of goods like gold, ostrich feathers and ivory, they were also buying and selling black Africans as slaves. The largest part of the slave trade in the, in the northern part of Africa involved camel caravans. These traders will have large number of camel caravans loaded with slaves and then bring them to be sold to the Europeans because their trading routes was the Sahara area most of the slaves were transported through the Sahara desert some of the caravans crossed the Western Sahara, which is, or the, the place which is now the present day Mali, Niger and Nigeria, and also Ghana. They got the slaves from these parts of West Africa and then shipped them to North Africa. This means that the Arabs were not getting the slaves only from the northern part of Africa, but they even went outside the northern part of Africa all the way into the western part to get people to be sold as slaves. <laughs> 
as earlier indicated, because the trading route was the Sahara region, most of the slaves were transported by foot through the Sahara Desert, and most of them could not survive the long journeys, so they died along the way. There were many women who became domestic workers, some became concubines, and there were also men who worked in their farms, in their mining companies, and some even were used as soldiers to fight the wars of these colonies or these European masters. Another branch of the Northern African trade took captives or slaves all the way from the east side through Ethiopia to ports or harbors on the Red Sea. So when the people got to the Red Sea, they were shipped to the Arabian Peninsula and other places. Historians have estimated about 3.5 to 4 million slaves who are said to have crossed the Sahara area. And about 2 million people who are said to have crossed the Red Sea out of the continent of Africa. Now, what have we been saying all this while? Let's give a quick review or summary of what we've been talking about today. Today, we are basically discussing slave trade in Africa. This is not much detailed, but this is to give you an idea of slave trade in Africa said that slavery is a condition where a person owned another person as a property. In slavery, the person who is owned as the slave did not have any basic human rights, but it was seen as but was seen as the property of the, of the slave master. Some of the slaves were gotten through rates, rates, through kidnapping, and through wars. They worked as laborers on plantations. They worked as miners. They worked as domestic workers. The Europeans who bought these slaves sent them to their colonies. In their colonies, both within and outside Africa, to go and work on the plantations they have established in those areas. We have talked about types of slavery. We talked about the formal slavery, which we refer to as the type of slavery where the slave is owned, where the slave is owned as a property by the slave master. We talked about the concubinate slavery, where the female slave becomes the concubine of the slave master and enjoys certain rights that the formal slavery or the person within the former slavery system does not enjoy. We talked about the court slavery, where the slave is said to be attached to a shrine. There, you were a slave to the deity and the priest of that shrine. We talked about the debt peonage, 
where a slave was used as payment of debts, either by his or her parents or by a family relation. And then we also talked about serfdom, where a person was a slave, not to an individual, but to a particular place he or she lived. Then we went on to talk about how slavery was practiced in some other parts of Africa. We talked about how slavery was practiced in North Africa, in Western Africa, in Central Africa, and in the Eastern parts of Africa. And this is where we bring our class to a close. Next week, we will move to another part or another aspect of the discussion on slave trade. Next week, we will look at some of the factors that caused or influenced slavery in Africa. And then we also look at the impact of slave trade on the continent of Africa. Thank you for your attention.